Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon video. So on October 17th of 2023, we recently just got a new uh, update on the current ban and restriction list. So if you want to go see exactly everything in full detail on the official website, feel free to do so, but I'm going to be covering all of that information right here in this video. It's going to be uh, taking in effect uh, in English uh, on November 17th of 2023, and uh, Japan is going to be uh, taking effect a little bit earlier on October 27th. So as far as the cards that actually did get limited to one, the first one being Gabumon from Starter Deck 6. So, Gabumon from Starter Deck 6, uh, we already know based on Japanese information that it is one of the better Gabumons for Purple Base uh, Gururumon X Antibody to be utilizing. What's making this card super strong is the fact that it's when attacking Inheritable Ability, it's not limited to once per turn, means that uh, you could do it recursively over and over again, and the more attacks that you have, which we already know that Gururumon likes to utilize lots of multiple attacks, the more we could cycle through our deck, set up our trash, and it makes it that much harder for the opponent to be able to respond to what we're potentially doing, especially since this inheritable ability is on a level 3, meaning we have really easy and early access to this ability. The next card that did get limited to 1 is going to be another Gabumon, and this time it is going to be the BT2 version of Gabumon. So the BT2 version of Gabumon, yes, again, is another Gabumon. So it is a hit to uh, the uh, Gururumon X Antibody deck for utilizing a purple base. But uh, this card also can be abused in a wide variety of other decks just because, again, its inheritable ability is helping you draw and discard. The next card that they decided to limit to 1 is going to be BT13 Geo Greymon. So BT13 Geo Greymon, as we already know, is inside of the Shine Greymon deck, and Shine Greymon is one of the better decks currently in the game for the English format, and is still one of the top 10 decks over in Japan. What makes this card so good is the fact that it's just another way to be able to play out your tamer, except this time it's being able to play out your tamer from security, so you could just have an extra tamer out of nowhere. Other decks also can abuse this card to be able to play out tamers generically because it's not specifically asking for Marcus Damon. So decks like Yellow Vaccine, Mastemon, and various other red and yellow decks uh, wanted and have adopted utilizing this card just because uh, of that searching through your security not only gives you that information on what's in your security, is just that good. The next one on the list is going to be uh, EX4 Mach Galgamon. So EX4 Mach Galgamon is a really powerful level 5 Digimon for the Mirage Galgamon deck, mainly because the inheritable ability is completely different than all of the other Mach Galgamons, making it the easiest one for us to set up and use for that extra swing. Plus, on top of that, uh, the uh, when digivolving ability adding some extra control is super valuable just because it, you could use that in combination with the other EX4 uh, cards to be able to uh, make it your evolutions cheap just because uh, a lot of the triggers on your low level Digimon will want to trigger when you're going to be bouncing something, which this card is doing really effectively to remove lots of potential threats and floodgates that the opponent could be presenting you with. And then the last uh, new card to get added uh, onto the list is going to be uh, Eismon Scatter Mode, now being limited to one copy, joining its brethren, Eismon. So uh, Eismon Scatter Mode is just an absolutely super insanely easy card for virtually any purple deck to use to be able to have access at not only just seeing a lot of cards, but putting a decent amount of cards into your trash. Because it's utilizing drawing and discarding rather than just straight up milling, it's a lot safer in terms of being able to set up your trash into a particular state with the cards that you wanted. And uh, you could pair this up with a whole bunch of other inheritable abilities to be able to extend the reach on how many cards you're going to be drawing and how many cards you're going to be discarding, making him just one of the most efficient cards for you to use to be able to fill up your trash relatively quickly with select cards putting you at a huge advantage over your opponent. And it seems like uh, this card is so good, it's uh, eating up at design space when it comes to utilizing trash-based strategies, 
really uh, limiting what they can make because if they do make anything, they're going to have to try to compete with Eismon Scatter Mode, which they'd rather not do. And then there was a little bit of a surprise when it comes to this uh, ban and restricted list uh, that I don't think a lot of people, myself included, were expecting, and that's for them to actually be unrestricting cards. So unrestricting cards is the act of taking a card that was already restricted and, well, giving us full access back to the cards. So as a result, we did end up getting BT6 Savior Huckmon Unlimited. So uh, they stated that in the past, uh, that's the reason why it was limited was because it was just too efficient at letting Jessmon deal lots of damage rather quickly, ignoring and bypassing a lot of uh, the natural defenses in the game at that time, which I would agree with. So uh, now that the game has evolved and matured into a completely different state, they're deciding that Savior Huckmon isn't necessarily the problem that it once was, so, so they're giving us full access back to this card. They also are on the same train of thought when giving us full access back to BT7 Tommy Himi, where it doesn't necessarily seem like uh, it was as problematic as it once was just because uh, the game has evolved and changed and there's a little bit more counterplay uh, to what Tommy can do. I still think that both of these cards are going to be really strong and uh, their inclusion back into the game is definitely going to be interesting to see how that develops, but I definitely like the idea on cards that were banned due to uh, the current environment that they were played in being freed up just because the game has evolved past what was making them so oppressive to begin with is really good for the overall game. So as far as uh, the big question on will Jessmon and Blue Hybrids make a comeback, well, the answer is going to be maybe. It's hard to say exactly how they're going to be coming back and what the decks are going to be doing in the current environment because there is just a lot of testing that's going to have to go into these decks to see uh, with the, the cards of back uh, unlimited and unrestricted what they could even potentially do at this point and what their matchups are. So as some of the decks uh, that are directly impacted from these ban and restrictions, obviously Metal Gururumon in EX5 is going to be hugely impacted just because uh, the uh, EX5 stuff at that time is going to want us to utilize a Gururumon purple base. It's still playable just because the level 4s are untouched and we still have enough level 3s to be able to use, but it's not going to be anywhere near as good as what's going to be coming out for Metal Gururumon in BT15, which is going to adopt a blue base. Then obviously the big one is going to be Apoclemon as uh, the big primary target for this ban and restriction list, and Bandai really just wanted to try to slow him down as best as they possibly could without completely killing the deck outright. And then Shine Greymon was another deck that was obviously hit due to this ban and restriction list. It has one less way to be able to get out its tamer, which I think is fine because that's going to try to slow down the deck a little bit and make it less consistent. Uh, but we do have the training cards that are going to be coming out in BT14 to try to make up for that. Mirage is going to be just fine, even though, yes, uh, the best uh, inheritable to be able to swing multiple times is no longer there. The extra little bit of removal is also going to be felt, but we have plenty of other options to be able to fill in that void. And then lastly, decks that use Eismon Scatter Mode in either of the Gabumons uh, and Geo Greymon obviously are going to be impacted, but they'll just have to adapt and use different cards in their place. And then as far as some strong decks to highlight that basically dodged the new limitations, you still have uh, in the purple space EX5 Anubismon and BT14 Lukamon as two of the stronger purple decks that were untouched. Then you also have Red Black Greymon, basically every green deck. You have Royal Knights, Divas, Cross Decks, uh, Machine Dramon, and more that were not affected by this ban list. While it does suck to see certain cards go, and it does uh, suck that it does impact uh, decks that utilize them, it's not all that bad at the end of the day, and there's still plenty cards to be played with and plenty of powerful and strong decks to use. So as far as uh, some of the best replacements for Geo Greymon, Obviously, uh, when a card gets limited and people don't know what to do, 
you look for, well, what is going to be the next best thing for you to incorporate into your deck to try to maintain its overall power level as best as you possibly can. Obviously, without its inclusion, it's going to be a little bit worse, but that's kind of the whole point of the ban and limitation to begin with. I think that the easiest thing you could use with Geo Greymon is just to subsidize him with the other uh, red and yellow Geo Greymons, and to just play some more memory boosts to try to keep your consistency as high as you possibly can, not only to try to find your cards, but to make sure your cards are as playable as possible. So a good solid recommended uh, level 4 lineup for Shine Greymon to use is just going to be 4 copies of the BT12 Geo Greymon, 4 copies of the EX4, the 1 of BT13, and then 1 other card if you even wanted to. I think the best card for that other space if you wanted to run just another Geo Greymon is going to be the starter deck 7 Geo Greymon, just because the security ability could come out of nowhere and surprise the opponent, giving you an extra body while also potentially removing an extra body. As far as the best uh, replacements uh, to uh, Maka Gaugamon, this one's a little bit easier just because uh, we already had two uh, really solid alternatives already lined up for us that we potentially were already playing. Then, when it comes to uh, the best replacements for Icemon Scatter Mode, there's two that really stand out just because they're doing something very similar and very comparable to what Icemon Scatter Mode is doing, and that's going to be Dark Lizardmon and Dobermon. And then the Gabumons are a little bit harder to replace because there's not necessarily good replacements for them. There's not really a whole lot of inheritable abilities to help try to turbo fill your trash as quickly as you possibly can, but we do have a whole bunch of uh, other Digimon with on play or on delete effects on level 3s that we could use uh, to try to accomplish uh, filling up our trash as quickly as we possibly can. As far as uh, the limitations to a purple-based uh, Garurumon deck that really wanted to form an EX5, it looks like we're just going to be stuck with a very simple and effective lineup of uh, four copies of Starter Deck 16 Gabumon, four copies of EX5 Gabumon X, one copy of BT2 Gabumon, one copy of Starter Deck 6 Gabumon, and then two slots to basically do whatever we feel like we want to with. So as far as my overall thoughts and opinions on this ban and restriction list, I really don't feel like this list was bad. The main goal of the list uh, was to try to limit uh, some of the more powerful decks, and they accomplished that. My only uh, disappointment when it comes to this list is they could have done a little bit more, just because we already know that Lugamon and uh, Anubismon are two of the most powerful decks uh, that are going to be running around, which will end up making them a little bit more dominant than they might have been otherwise. So could it have been better? Yes. More could have been done to further limit uh, what's currently topping in Japan that are problematic. Past cards are basically paying for the sins of some of the future cards, but the past cards also were designed with a completely different mindset and were supposed to be a little bit more generic than what we currently have now, which ends up leading to problems because of how abusable they could end up being. But I do think that this is a good step in the right direction, and maybe we could get another ban and restriction list either before Nationals or their World Tour, or even after their Nationals and World Tour, just because they would have that data to be able to evaluate and assess what actually needs to be a hit and limited going forward. So I think that the cards uh, taken off the list was a big surprise, and uh, I don't know if that's a mistake considering I'm in the mindset of if it's banned once, it should stay banned. But I'm open to the idea to see uh, if uh, cards actually are not as impactful as they once were to be able to make a comeback, but only time will tell if it's a mistake or not, uh, and I'm excited to see what this change to the game is going to bring and offer us. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a TCG Player affiliate link 
So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.